Hey guys, Shane T here with a little update on fuel injection timing and fuel injection phase angle. So here's my quick 15 minutes video on how injection timing works and how you can adjust it. This is not intended to be a fits all one stop shop for injection timing. It's just meant to provide a little bit of information to those who are curious about what injection phase angle or injection timing means when using a MoTeC engine management system. Injection timing. Big question in everybody's mind lately, I don't know why, but suddenly everybody wants to know how injection timing works and how you change it and how you tune for it. Injection timing, assuming you're using a system which is both synchronous to the engine cycle and also sequential so that one injector fires one cylinder at a time, the injection timing can be phased or the injection phase angle can be adjusted uh, to try to take advantage of potentially spraying fuel on the back of a closed valve or spraying fuel in, uh, in the situation where the intake valve is open. Now, there are many different sources you can use to find out what's optimum and why, and they're available through SAE, so just like me, you can go pay for an SAE paper, paper and read about it. That's beyond the scope of this video. This video is simply to illustrate what injection phase angle is and or injection timing and try to give you a general, generic idea. There is no magic number that works in every case. Every engine's different, just like every engine can't use the same VE curve. Every engine wants something a little bit different. There are some generalities. So on the screen, I've taken the liberty of using Motex old school utility that everyone's seen in the setup for a cam and a crank sensor that shows a crank position sensor and a cam position sensor and the idea with this software is to try to help you understand what the crank reference offset position is but it also has this handy time scale down along the bottom which is degrees before top dead center compression and I've taken the liberty of adding the four strokes of the uh, four stroke cycle in and labeling them so this is the power stroke from top dead center compression to 180 after right so this is power then exhaust from 180 to 360, we reach the next top dead center, which is overlap. The valves will both be open in this case. Then we start on the intake stroke from 360 after top dead center compression to 540. And then from 540 on up to 720, which if you think about it, 720 is the same as zero, right? It's, it's two revolutions later on the next engine's cycle, right? So this is effectively top dead center compression. 720 is zero if you want. Uh, typically, we would be talking about ignition timing in reference to top dead center compression. And if we were leading the advance by, say, 30 degrees, uh, it looks like we have a 70 and 90 degree reference. So each of these marks is 30 degrees. So if we were firing our spark timing at 30 before, we would be firing it right at this point, right? before top dead center compression. So I've also uh, done some highly technical graphics using some masking tape to illustrate uh, different percentages of injector duty cycle. Now, in order to understand what you're doing with injection timing, it's important to get the injection timing into a relative number, either in crank degrees, so that you can compare it to you know, crank position, or figure out what the time or percentage of cycle time that the intake valve is open for. Now this is just a sample. I've labeled intake open and intake close, IO and IC. This green, green line here represents the time when an intake valve might crack open off of its seat and close off of its seat slightly before top dead center on the overlap stroke and then close uh, somewhere around 60 or a little after 60 after bottom dead center coming up on the compression stroke. So you can see that the valve opening time in degrees, and we have the sample up here in the upper right corner, if it opens at 375 before top dead center compression, and it closes at 120 before top dead center compression, 
the difference is 255 degrees. That 255 degrees, when divided by the total number of degrees in the four-stroke cycle, which is 720, represents 0.354, or 35.4% of the total available time during the cycle is intake valve open. So in other words, the intake valve duty cycle is 35.4% in this example. So if I were to remove one of my tape graphics that represents 25% of the cycle time, and assume that under full power, my injection duty cycle is 50%. If I had my injection timed to start at, at uh, 360 before top dead center compression, you can see that it would overlap the closing part of the intake valve by this amount, right? And some of this fuel would end up sitting on the back of the valve until the next cycle when the intake valve opens, right? Now I could change my phasing with the same total amount of fuel flow, 50% duty cycle on the injector, I could choose to start my injection timing in such a way that the end of my delivery of 50% ends exactly when my intake valve closes. In this case, some fuel would start to spray into the intake port and sit on the back of the valve until the valve opened, and then it would spray in while the air and fuel were flowing into the cylinder while the valve's open, and it would stop just before the valve closes. There are two different types of valve open or valve closed injection timings that are referred to, and which one is best for you depends on lots of parameters, and not every engine wants the same thing. Um, if I want to phase my injection by the starting point, that means the end point will tend to vary as my pulse width goes up, assuming I keep a fixed point to start with. If I end my injection timing at a fixed point, then the start point will have to vary in order to make increase or decrease in pulse width if I always end at the same place. You can choose in lots of different software, the start point or the end point or some other arbitrary point in the middle, um, which one is best for your engine completely depends upon the engine and, and in some ways your preference. My preference is end of injection because as the end of injection uh, is adjusted, it doesn't have to vary by as much to keep the pulse in the same position. In other words, if I always end at the same time, as the pulse starts to increase this way, if I want to try to lead the fuel, I don't have to make as big of a change to lead the fuel as if I start, right? And then I have to increase my start point to keep the end in the same place. So I like end of injection for that reason. And I've also noticed on some engines that acceleration enrichment uh, and response is improved by using end of injection because uh, the pulse makes it in on the current cycle, assuming it hasn't delivered all of it before it gets to the end. That may be confusing and may not work in every application, and that's okay. The idea is that you put your engine on the dyno and you tune your engine. Injection timing is not a make or break. And by the way, when your pulse gets way larger than your intake valve duty cycle, in this case, we're only a little bit larger at 50%, right? So some fuel is gonna go on the back of the valve before the valve opens. If we were to add another 25% based on our size of our injectors, and we were to start spraying that fuel, you can see what happens. We now have a massive amount of overlap between the injection event. This now represents 75% duty cycle or 75% of the cycle time available. We're spraying fuel. You can clearly see that since there's so much overlap in fuel that's spraying into the engine, it doesn't make much difference where we start and where we stop. We're always going to overlap this intake valve duty cycle by a lot in which case the injection timing adjustment will probably not make that much of a difference. If, however, we have relatively large injectors compared to the amount of fuel volume that the engine requires, we might end up with a situation where we have an injection event that lasts for much less than the intake valve open event lasts for, in which case, if I can get the tape on here straight, which I apparently can't, even kind of straight would probably work. 
Oh yeah, that's nice and uphill. Let's try both hands for flipping all the cards. There we go. So there's a 25% duty cycle representation over the intake valve duty cycle. Now my experience tells me that in this case, when you have a very small injection event compared to your intake valve duty cycle, the phasing or the timing of the injector becomes highly critical. And it can make a massive difference, particularly in the case of a normally aspirated engine. I recently worked on a normally aspirated engine that was tuned appropriately at the correct mixture and correct ignition advance, and it made somewhere around 540 horsepower at the rear wheels. I looked at the injection phase angle, and from experience, I knew that probably the engine wanted a different injection phase angle than was being used. I put the engine in closed loop. I moved the injection timing to what I figured it probably wanted. I was able to maintain the same air fuel ratio because I had it in closed loop, and the reward was almost 60 wheel horsepower increase. Nothing else different, simply phasing the injector to the right part of the cycle made almost a 10, or a little over a 10% horsepower increase. Now, that's not always going to be the case. That was a highly refined, high RPM, tuned intake, tuned exhaust engine, four valve, uh, and it made a massive difference. I just recently tuned another high RPM engine that had high and low injector setup where two injectors were spraying fuel in uh, and that engine was entirely insensitive to injection timing. You could move it anywhere you wanted in the cycle and make exactly the same horsepower no matter where you put it. And once again, if you have an injection event that is much longer than the intake valve open duty cycle, in other words, you're spraying fuel Back in this example where we're going to make it be 75% of the cycle, available cycle time that we're spraying fuel. If you're doing that, your injection phasing angle is almost unimportant entirely because so much of the time the injector is spraying fuel into the runner. It doesn't make much difference when you start and when you stop. So in that case, making an injection timing adjustment may not yield anything. The idea is to use the dyno to, to decide what the engine wants. No one can tell you what the optimum injection timing is for your engine without running it on a dyno because we have all sorts of delays in the position of the injector compared to the valve, the, the speed of the air going through the intake port, and because of the design of the engine. So it's important to make this adjustment on a dyno where you can measure the results, hold the air fuel ratio constant if you have a closed loop control, That'll make things a lot easier because you won't screw your results up by measuring two different changes at once. And then you can decide what the optimum injection phase angle is for your engine. Again, there are lots of resources out there to tell you what should be optimum based on theory. I'm telling you, you have to make an adjustment on the dyno to check. Every time you try to add it up before you start, you're missing some delays, you're missing some uh, amount of delay in the injector from when it's commanded on to when it starts to spray and that will tend to skew your results if you try to strictly do it by mathematics. You need to do a little bit of trial and error, move the injection phase angle around, find out what your engine wants. So that's your update on injection phase angle, injection timing. In a MoTeC, the number that is referenced is referenced in degrees before top dead center, right? And so if you have an end of injection type of a control and you have a value of 177 in the injection timing table, that means it will stop spraying fuel 177 degrees before top dead center on the compression stroke. Thinking backwards from top dead center, there's 90 down on the compression stroke, there's 180 down. Wait, yes. So 180, this is the bottom of the compression stroke. The intake valve doesn't close at the bottom, it closes slightly after, right? So it's a reference point to top dead center compression. The best place to get support for your system is from the person you bought it from. Other dealers who may have experience using MoTeC systems and tuning will want to charge you a premium for supporting a system which they didn't sell and some dealers won't even support those systems 
even if you offer to pay them a premium.